Hey everyone, Enrico from Jami Anthony here, and I've got another video on the SQ Mixpad software from Alan and Hank. Today, we're going to be looking at the setup and the utility tabs. First thing I want to show you is the strip assign function. This is for configuring the mixer and each of its different fader layers. It's completely customizable and it can be any blend of anything you see on here on the board. So you have up to six layers and we're configuring an SQ7. So we have 32 slots on each of our six layers. You just go, click, and then drag down whatever you would like to add. To remove something, you click and swipe up. It's that simple. You can also put in blank slots if you want to create intentional gaps between the different faders. I have the option of inputs, mixes, effects, DCAs, and MIDI. And I can put this in any combination that I want. You'll see on this first layer, I have a bunch of DCAs with an input in there, as well as some effects returns, including my talkback input as well over at the end. And just because I have 32 faders on the SQ7 doesn't mean I necessarily need to have all 32 slots filled up. Here you see that I've only got four taken up. Next, we're gonna go over to audio. This is where we configure our PAFL and our signal generator. The good thing about PAFL on the SQs is that we actually have this additive function and this is gonna allow us to add the signal and listen to two sources together. And a good thing about this is like if I wanna check the phase on my snare top and bottom, I can use that to solo them together as if I were in a studio. With it toggled off, I can easily switch back and forth between different sources and just listen to something by itself and really dial it in. I can also configure an external one using any of the ports or inputs that I have on here. And if I need as well, I have phantom power, a pad, gain, and trim. Down here, we have input to PAFL source. Clicking this is actually gonna let you select where along your signal path you want to listen to the PAFL. You can go right off the preamp and insert return, the parametric EQ, or delay. Here, we've got the signal generator. This is a really useful tool if I need to maybe align some of my fills or if I wanna tune my PA system. So I have a sine wave, white noise, pink noise, and bandpass noise. With sine and the bandpass, I can actually go and select the frequency and for all four, I can adjust my level and quickly mute. Over here, we just go over to whatever output we wanna write out to and just simply click on or off. This next section is mixer configuration, and you can almost think of this as like a quick start template. You just select standard or monitor, and you have a quick start for if your front of house or your monitor position. You can adjust the mix and listen outputs as well. For ganging, we have eight different gangs, and each of those can have up to 12 members. You just click and drag down what you would like to put in that gang, and you can just simply click what features and attributes you would like to carry over, hit apply, and you're done. And you can do that for up to eight gangs. On Mixpad, we have a couple different things we can configure. The first one is banks. So for banks, I'm gonna click over to the processing window. And if you look down here, you can see that I've actually got 16 visible channels on my fader right now. I can reduce that to 12 or eight and I can also lock it so that it actually scrolls in chunks of those amounts rather than scrolling over. So here I'm going in eights and I just click whatever section that I would like to view. For channels, this is for using the Mixpad software in conjunction with the board. I can have the Mixpad software follow along with whatever mix or channel that I'm using by leaving those on and if I disable them, I can actually use the Mixpad software almost as a second desk and control everything that's going on from the board, independently of whoever's actually mixing. So you can have a front of house engineer on the board and then give this to a monitor engineer and have them mix independently of what's going on over at the desk. For when we're running in offline mode, we can program a show ahead of time. And this actually lets you select if you're using a five, six, or seven and configure the software based around whichever mixer you're using. Whenever you're done programming a show offline, you're gonna to wanna to go over to the utility tab and here you can save a show file. You can store them locally on your computer or you can push them out to a USB drive if you would like. And it's just a matter of storing and then you can quickly move on to the next show profile 
that you need to go and set up. You can actually click up here and push the show file to the desk or pull one from the desk if you've made modifications to one you already had saved and you want to just back it up on your computer. And that kind of covers everything that's in the setup and utility tabs. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and share it. Please subscribe to JBA University. If you don't want to miss any other videos we have, make sure you click the bell. Thanks for watching and see you next time.